Welcome to The Wang Reviewer, my name is Will, where I do tech unboxing, tech reviews, and tech tutorials. And in today's episode, we are going to review an electric scooter. And this is my very first one, I've never used one before. I'm very excited to use it. I'm sure my kids are very excited to use it as well. So the scooter that I got is uh, from a company called Gyrocopters, and the model is Sunic, S-O-O-N-I-C. So some of the features that it has is it has fast speed, power recycle, electronic ABS, safe mode, um, energy saving, 8.5 solid rubber wheels, LCD display, and three riding modes. I'm gonna unbox this and review some accessories that comes with this electronic scooter. I'm also gonna do a high level review of the features and functions of the scooter as well. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is my overall impression of using it as a main mode of transportation to get to work. All right, if you found this video helpful, please remember to give it a like, hit the thumbs up below, and remember to subscribe to my channel for similar content. So without further ado, let's get to the unboxing. So before I do the unboxing, I just wanna talk about some of the specs. The weight is 12 kilograms. It's for ages 12 plus, but my kids are younger, they're, they're using it, it's fine. The maximum range is 20 kilometers, but that's on Encana mode. Maximum speed is 28 kilometers per hour. Max load is 100 kilograms. Uh, maximum climb is 20 degrees, charge times between four to five hours, and the motor power is 250 watts. I'm just gonna quickly unbox some accessories. So the handlebars are separate. And you can install those in in a second here. It's a rubber handle. And then that is the AC adapter that plugs into the wall. The charge uh, includes some Allen keys and the Sunic user manual and installation guide. So one of the accessories that come with this electronic scooter is a helmet. They're thinking about safety and they would provide a bike helmet for you. Um, it's just a, a normal bike helmet as the gyrocopters.ca on there to advertise for them when you're riding about. Um, it also has a very nice dial at the back to tighten it and loosen it to cinch it to your head on uh, different sizes. It just comes in one size, you can't choose it. Uh, the only concern I have with using this helmet is there's no sticker that says it's CSA approved. Um, this scooter is made in China, which means this is made in China. And uh, I'm not sure if this has actually passed CSA uh, approval. So I personally will not be using this helmet. I'll be using a helmet that I bought at my local bike store that actually has a CSA approval on it. So that's just a warning if anyone cares. Um, and that's the reason why I won't be using this helmet. So I'm just gonna use my son's example of bike helmet here as an example of a CSA approved label. And it also has a serial number as well. So this one kind of tells you that uh, it is up to a safety standard for bicycle helmets for, uh, this one's for ages five and under. Uh, and then it just has uh, the serial number or batch number that's in there. So this is kind of what I'm looking for. So I know that it's been tested and safe. Whereas the gyro one does not have this similar sticker. So in terms of installation and putting this together, there's really not much to put together. The only thing you do have to put together is the handlebar you have to attach. And here is the brake and the bell that has to be attached, that comes loose, that has to be attached. All you do is you just slip it in. Then it does provide you with the Allen key. Depending on where you want it, you tighten it. And then the handlebars, which I showed earlier, you just screw into place. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then here you can adjust where you want it. So right around there. And there's just a matter of taking the Allen key and tightening the screw just to make sure it's in place. And there you go. So in terms of installation setup, again, it's very easy. It's just the two handlebars that has to be screwed in and then just assigning uh, and just putting this uh, brake on. Here's some additional features. This here is your locking mechanism. This locks the scooter into place when it's folded down and I'll demonstrate that in a second. This is an adjustable phone mount. There's a dowel at the bottom here that you can loosen that makes it wider 
or skinnier, depending on what kind of phone you have. It does fit my iPhone XX Max. And here is the gas pedal. So when you push it down, it makes the bike go faster and adjust accordingly how far you push down. So this is what the gas pedal is. And then again, this is just a rubberized handle. So to power on your electric scooter, you press the button down here. It turns on. Um, actually, when you turn on, you hear a slight humming noise coming from the unit itself. Uh, I'm not sure if, you, if the mic can pick it up, but there is a bit of a humming noise that comes when you turn it on. So the indicator right now is really simple. It just shows your speed. Right now it's zero kilometers per hour, because we're not moving. A battery indicator. It has five bars in total. Right now it's four out of five, because we're using it for a while. And there's three modes that you can cycle through. CE is Econo mode, which the max speed is 15 kilometers per hour, which means it uses less battery. Press it once, it goes to N. I believe this is normal mode, which the max speed is 20 kilometers per hour. I cycle through it again and goes to S mode, which is sport mode, which goes up to a max speed of 26 kilometers per hour. So one thing to note, depending on what mode you use, whether it's economy mode, normal or sport mode, it does affect your battery life, which affects your distance of how far you can travel. So in sport mode, because the max speed is 26 kilometers per hour, it is going to drastically reduce your battery and also the distance that you can actually travel on the scooter. Um, none of the literature I've read tells you what, what that is, um, but I know for right now, what the literature does say is when you're in economy mode and traveling a max speed of 15 kilometers per hour, the distance to go without charging is 20 kilometers. Another feature this unit has is also a headlight mode. So if you double click, you can see the headlight indicator turn on and the headlight mode is, the headlight is on and it's double click again and the headlight turns off. And I'll demonstrate that for uh, nighttime riding. All right, so, that, so that's kind of a quick overview of the three different modes and your LCD display. Here's the tire. It's eight and a half inches of solid rubber. It is covered up in the front. I'm assuming that's where your drive mechanism is. And has a reflector. Has a bit of a, friend, a fender there to cover up the wheel. Here's a close look at the rubber tire. It's a solid eight and a half inch of solid rubber. I can't really depress it. You can see there is some groove marks or some treads. I'm not sure how well they're going to weather. I guess it's something time will tell. Um, we did ride this on a gravel patch yesterday as well as um, normal sidewalk. I've had this for about a week now uh, with daily usage and so far it looks like there's not a lot of wear so it looks pretty decent. There is a fender at the top to prevent splashing. And again you can see it's, the wires are covered in a red coil sheath going to the mechanism here. Okay, so now I'm gonna just take a look at the bottom of the scooter here. So this is a rubber, gray rubber mat. It has some grooves on it to help you with better footing on there. The one thing I did notice after week use of daily use, this is starting to peel off, which means I am going to have to glue this on. I don't wanna trip over it while I'm riding. You can see it's already peeling off on the other side too. Um, However, it's supposed to, I'm assuming, also cushion some of the vibration as well, so you're just not standing right on the aluminum here. Um, the charging port is right here. It is covered with a plastic um, cover, so it's nice, so you can't get water into it or dirt as easily. Some warning la labels about the battery, so the battery is all underneath here. Uh, it does have a kickstand, which is nice, and this is where the electronic ABS is at the back. This is where your brake is. It does have a fender as well to protect um, splashing. And this right here is the rubber knob that locks scoots in place when you're trying to, uh, when it's folded down. And I'll demonstrate that in a second. The rear fender has a brake light, so when you actually click on the brake, um, it pulsates to let people know you're about to stop, and it's, this is especially handy at night. As you can see, it folds nicely, and I'm taking it out of the house right now. Uh, and it's not very heavy at all. You can lift it with one hand. And this is very convenient, especially for myself, who takes it in and out of the office.
as you can see, it's really hard to unlock. This mechanism isn't really good. Um, so after the first, I still haven't got the hang of unlocking the scooter, as you can see from my struggles. It is, it is quite a pain, and shows how out of shape I am because I'm breathing really hard right now when I shouldn't be. Um, but no, this is one of the pain points of this scooter is this locking mechanism here is very difficult to unlock after it's put in there. The concept is great, it locks into place and you can you can uh, lift it up and take it anywhere, but it, it is a bit of a pain to unlock. And uh, now that when I use it for the office, I actually don't even lock it anymore. I just kind of half fold it down and just carry it from here and just carry it into the office because again, like it's a struggle just to, to unlock it. And I can't find a, a way of doing it. So what you have to do is you have to open this mechanism and kind of push the handlebar this way to kind of unlock it. I, there's gotta be a, a better way of, of doing this um, or a different way. But anyways, that's one of my biggest beefs is this locking me mechanism. So let's see if there's a way for me to, to uh, finish unlocking it. You have to lift and then pops right out. So that's my big beef about this electronic scooter is uh, this mechanism is not intuitive and I find it very hard to uh, release it after it's locked into a fold mode. I am going to leave a link in the description below where to purchase this e-scooter. The opinion is solely my own. They did not pay me for this or advertise or sponsor this video, uh, but I am just very happy with the scooter and I want to share this with the rest of you. So as of right now, it's about $500 Canadian. And again, I'll leave the link in the description below. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Please stay tuned for a second video. I am going to show more footage of us actually using this e-scooter um, on grass, on pavement, and on sidewalks. So please stay tuned for that one. All right, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.